Don't you, eh? You know, I can remember when you drank beer. Hmm. Oh, just one cigar left. I thought I'd more. All right. Let's drink to the team of which I have the, the doubtful privilege to be the manager. The Blues, eh? The Blues. The blues. Ah, blues. And promotion next season. Yeah, next season better be the one where I'm moving on. Uh, Susie, what do you say to, to uh, coming back to Scotland with me, eh? What, for good, you mean? Well, if I had a good... Welcome to Who Done It, and as far as I know, that is the first football manager to get the chop this season. <laughs> Maybe not the last, but I suspect the first. And the question is, who do you suspect of terminating his contract? In a moment, we'll show the events leading up to his death, and then the suspects will be cross-examined here in the studio by our, by our pools panel. This week, we have a gentleman who's starring this time next week in a new ITV series called What's On Next, William Franklin. Good And what's on next is a lady who's starring in the same series, Sandra Dickinson. <laughs> Our TV Times Who Done It competition winner, who this week is from Barnsley, Paul Malkin. <laughs> and far from least, a man who has written a play about football, so he should be able to announce Who Done It on News at 10 tonight, Gordon Honeycomb. <laughs> Right, let's get back to the story. A city football manager, Alan McLean, has just dropped dead in the Queen's Elm Saloon bar. And to make it more confusing, Sergeant Di Roper Evans, a fanatical Llanthlethley rugby union supporter, is about to question the suspects. Uh, by the way, there are two main clues and two smaller clues that should lead you to the main clues. It sounds confusing, but if you keep your eyes open, you'll see what I mean. Well, I put the others in a public bar so I can question you lot here. Seems you all had some connection with the deceased. Uh, Alan McLean, manager of City Football Team. PC Good, I'll ask when I need you. Of course, it could have been an accident. He was drinking a lot of scotch, wasn't he? Where's his glass? Well, I thought he'd had a heart attack, so I uh, washed it up and hung it back up on the shelf. Oh, that's great. Bloody great. You should know better than to touch things before we arrive. Which glass was it? Do you remember? No. That's even better. <coughs> He's smoking one of these cigars, too. He didn't have any on him when I arrived. <coughs> Check the bar area, Sergeant. There are no open cigar packets to be seen at all. Somebody's nicking all the evidence round here. Right, Fred, let's start with you, Boyle. Oh, what do you want to know? Standing behind the bar, did you, by any chance, hear any interesting conversations? In the course of duty? No, not really. Of course, I overheard what Mary and Charlie were saying because I was pulling a pint just next to them. You're right, Slope. If he's going to marry that girl, you might not get your alimony regular. So ask him. Oh, you don't know Alan, Charlie. That was his brother-in-law for long enough. Yes, but he's not married yet. If I ask him now, he'll say football's a mug's game today. He's not got enough. <laughs> Nonsense. I read in the paper he was getting 12,000 a year. You don't still believe the sporting pages, do you? Anyway, knowing Alan, he'd probably give me a clout over the year for asking. Come on now, sis. If you don't ask him now, he'll try and cut you off without a penny. I'm telling you, if he tries anything, I'll get even with him. Don't you worry. And I've been waiting a long time. So have I, Charlie. And with more reason. All right. I'll have a go. 
I mean, I don't want to sound vindictive, but that's what I overheard. You swear that's the conversation Hey, hang on there. You... Hang on there. Didn't you leave a bit out, Fred? What are you trying Let to... me tell you, Sergeant, what he said after Mary went over to join Alan. Having trouble with Alan, then, Charlie? Listening as usual, Fred. Not exactly. Only I've got a score to settle with him. Ah, uh, what's that? Does he owe you money? In a strange way, yes. You see, I put a little bet on City getting promoted. Do you know what he did? In the last match of the season, there was one point to going up. Ten minutes to go, the score nil all, and he pulls off his best striker, Davy Randall over there. Oh, well, he is getting on a bit. Maybe he was tired. Didn't uh, Alan put a sub on then? Oh, yes. Super sub, Johnny Stevens. You know what? The first corner the other lot get, Stevens scores an own goal and City lose. Oh, well, it happens sometimes. You can't really blame Johnny. I'm telling you, Alan put Johnny in to lose. Now, why would he do that? Because Mr. I suspect he had a big bet on City not going up more than he could make if they did. I doubt it. Sounds like sour grapes, Fred. Sour grapes? Listen, what I had on, I stood to lose this pub. That's how sour it is. Well, he shouldn't bet so much. But I'll ask him if it helps. <laughs> so, if we're intent on telling tales about each other, that should even the score. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Every little helps. Now then, Miss Susie Booth. You came here with Alan McLean, is that right? Yes, I am. Or rather, was his girlfriend. Were you with him when Mrs. McLean came over? Yes. But I'm not one to stick around when the ex-wife wants to get into an argument, so I left. Ah, five of the best. Drink? <laughs> drink? Don't you make it sound inviting? What's wrong? You want a drink? Time was when you used to ask, would you like a drink, darling? Now it's just drink. Well, you've been awfully short with me these last few weeks, Alan. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's the disappointment of not going up. It'll make a difference financially. Hold on. I see my ex battle axe approaching. Mind if I join you for a moment, Alan? Not at all. You haven't met Susie, have you? I wanted to ask you about a personal matter. <laughs> well, you can see I haven't stopped smoking. Very funny. But since you mentioned it, try one of these. They help me give up smoking. Oh, you're always mothering me. All right, I'll take it. It will make you feel happy. I didn't know Alan wanted to give up smoking. Shows how little you know about him, dear. Ah, oh, stop bickering, will you? These taste awful. I should think these would kill you quicker than smoking would. Susie, go and have a word with Dave, will you? And uh, take him a cigar from me. Anything you say, darling. Would you like one? No, thanks. Hey, Dave, do you fancy a game? The boss is busy with his ex. OK. 301 up. You need a double to start. Oh, what are you so grumpy about? The season's over, you know. My football career, more likely. And it's your fellow what's doing it. Oh, come on, he's not that bad. Well, he asked me to give you this cigar. Oh, did he now? Oh, well, later, perhaps. Here, you kick off. Oh, thanks. You worried about next season? Oh, no. When I was a kid, I was a top striker. Now I'm a rather slow sweeper. You bet your sweet life I'm worried. The boss wants me out of the first team. The only chance I've got on my age is to get a transfer. Perhaps make a few, Bob. But the boss won't give me one. Well, haven't you saved any money from your better days? No, I've done it all, haven't I? Well, I'm going to have it out with him. Oh, treble 20! No, no, you need a double to start. Well, why don't I speak to him? Tell you what, I'll say I won't marry him unless he gives you a transfer. Hmm. <laughs> Save your breath. I wouldn't bank on that marriage. Oh, why? Think he's going to desert me at the altar? Something like that. During a training session, he told some of the lads he was going to drop you. Too expensive. Oh, did he now? 
Oh, I'm sorry, Chuck. Maybe you're joking, eh? You think he was? No, no. Alan McLean doesn't joke about things like that. Here, you practice it. I'm going to have a word with him. So I stayed over by the board for a while, but uh, I did join the others later at the bar. Yes, well, we'll come back to that in a moment, miss. Well, that seems to have given all of you enough motive. Uh, perhaps we were lucky, and he just dropped dead. Yes. But before the body was removed, I distinctly smelt bitter almonds. Now, I'm not an expert in this, and Excuse I could... Excuse me. I've checked the bar area, Sergeant. There are no almonds on the premises. Thank you, Constable. Now, bitter almonds suggest cyanide. And if this is borne out by the coroner's report, the poison was probably administered by one of you five. The question is, which one? And how? Welcome back to Who Done It, where we're trying to find out who killed the city football team manager. So let's get on with the second half. Alan McLean is the dead man, and the possible suspects appear to be as follows. Mary McLean, divorced wife of the deceased, and very resentful about being dumped by him. Her brother Charlie Moore, who resented Alan for the way his sister was treated and has threatened revenge. Susie Boo, the current girlfriend of Alan, who's just been told that Alan wanted to get rid of her by Dave Randall, one of the city team players. And Dave is desperate about getting a transfer. Or Fred, the pub landlord, who apparently lost a lot of money on a match which he thinks Alan deliberately threw away. Now, they're being questioned by PC Good and Sergeant Di Roper Evans, who at the moment seem to be making no progress at all. Oh, where was I? Dave Randall had just left me. Oh, no, wait a minute. We've, uh, we've skipped a bit. Now, what happened to Alan? Oh, uh, you are divorced, I take it? Yes, Sergeant. What happened after Miss Susie Booth left for the darts board? Well, as she told you, I gave him an anti-smoking pill. And then Alan asked her to go. And, uh, take him a cigar from me. Anything you say, darling. Do you want one? Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, what do you want, eh? Oh, nothing really. It's just that uh, I heard you were getting married again, and, well, I hoped it wouldn't affect us. You mean the money, don't you? Well, I'll pay what the court ordered and nothing more. Well, that's all right by me. That's all I ask. Good. Hey, Fred, a drink for the lady. Gin and French? Yes, a large one. We didn't say anything else to each other because Dave Randall came over to talk to Alan. So you're on pretty good terms at that stage? Oh, yes. Uh, just a minute. I overheard most of what you said and you've left out a great chunk about his marrying a tart and you getting your own back for ruining your life. Fred, you're a right little busybody, and aren't did you? Did you get your own back, Mrs. McLean? Are you suggesting that No, I... not yet. But Fred's remarks only endorse motive, which we already know about. No. It's the means that counts. Dave, you were on your way to tell Alan what you thought of him. Now, remember, there are witnesses, so let's save time by not omitting details. Oh, I've got nothing to hide. As soon as you already told you, I left her at the dartboard. Ah, Dave, Dave, just in time to stop a family barney. Yeah, well, I've got a challenge at the match, eh? Yeah. Good, good. Now, let's make a bit of room, shall we? Uh, if you don't mind, may I? Now, uh, we'll need some mats, eh? There we are. You keep your eye on that, will you, dear? 
Hey, what was that? Oh, sorry, it's a dart I brought up by mistake. Well, look where you're putting it. Uh, 20p a round, eh? Starting with one map. No, no, no. Gin and French for you, Maddie. Thanks, Fred. Oh, Fred, uh, how about uh, a round for the others, eh? You know, uh, Charlie, Susie, Dave here. A vodka neat. And have one for yourself. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, and uh, have a cigar. Thank you, Alan. Now, where's my drink, eh? Here it is, dear. Ah. Ah, it must be... It must be smashed. It looks bigger. I haven't touched it. Oh, thank God for that. I wouldn't like it to be contaminated. Oh. Pure Scotland, eh? Tastes better than the oil. <laughs> now, where were we? Yeah, sure, Bill. Here are the drinks that Alan bought for you. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Have you met uh, Susie Booth, Mary? Yes, thanks. Oh, come on, Mary. I've got no axe to grind. I did meet him after you two were divorced. That's right, you know. There's no need to be rude to each other. You're right, love. I apologise. Good. Great. Well, let's drink a toast. To the last of the great male chauvinist pigs. Oh, here, here. When are they going to stop playing that ridiculous game? Oh, when Alan wins enough money to pay for another round. Ah. You're learning quickly, love. Hey, hold on, hold on a minute, hold on. Oh, I see we've got the whole uh, family gathered here, eh? Oh, where's my... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, uh... I bought you all a drink to celebrate. Uh, I don't know exactly what, but, uh... No doubt we'll think of something. <laughs> you know, I can remember when you drank beer. And the rest you already heard from all of us, when you first questioned us on arrival, I believe. Yes, I think I remember. Now, does anybody disagree with what Dave's just told us? I'd just like to get the facts straight. Oh, incidentally, Dave, why did Alan call you the chopper? Oh, it's uh, just a nickname the fans gave me, you know, for tackling hard. For tackling too ruddy late, you mean? Oh, Mrs. McLean, could I see those smoking pills, please? Yes, certainly. Well, I'll have to ask you all to come down to the station to make a formal statement. What about the others next door? They might have done it. Uh, no. I think we've got the answer right here in this room. Ah, as I thought. What? No smell of cyanide. That doesn't mean anything. She might have swapped bottle. Yes, you're right, Constable. You're absolutely right. What do you know about cyanide? Well, I will tell you. It's quick. It's very quick. So, I'll take one. And you take one. And if I die first, you telephone the station and tell them who killed Alan McLean. <laughs> right. Have you solved it yet? Well, don't worry. There's the cross-examination still to come. And remember, panel, I'm the referee, so anybody who argues with me will be sent off. <laughs> right, first of all, is there any part of the action that you'd like to see replayed? Bill. Uh, yes, I'd like to see that 20 or 30 seconds prior to the actual cessation of his heart. Mm-hmm. Sandra. Uh, could I see where he uh, offers to buy everyone a drink, please? Yes. Paul? Uh, I'd like to see where Sergeant Evers is talking to Fred, please. Right, and Gordon. I'd like to see Charlie's flashback when he interrupts Fred and says there's just one thing. Right, it shall be done. Thank you very much indeed. Well, while we're looking for those, we'll have a few questions, I think. William, you're the nearest. Let's start. One question, please. Uh, Mary, it seems to me that um, Alan had a number of reasons for committing suicide. There seemed to be a lot of pressures on him one way or another. Is it possible that he was the sort of man that could have converted his angst into self-destruction? No, I wouldn't have thought so. He'd never given any indication, but then people don't. I hadn't been very close to him, as you know, for five years, but I don't think so. Uh, can I just follow that with one more question? My dear sir. In the five yeah, I years, I, I'm just interested to know, did you send him a supply of anti-smoking pills? 
Oh, no. No, this was just an... Uh, an odd pill you what? happened to have on you? It was an odd pill. No, it was an odd packet that I'd... I mean, I'd used to stop smoking, and, um, in fact, I was very embarrassed by the situation, and it covered a moment for me that was... Oh, yes, it's very reasonable. Very reasonable. It's one of these little giveaway packs that your doctors give you occasionally. Of course, yeah. Little sample packets. Yes, Sandra, question. Uh, Susie, can you tell me what you... what profession you have, or what, what you sort of... I'm a, I'm a secretary with a shirt to... Is that it? Yes. Right, Paul. Susie, um, how come Alan picked up your glass at the bar? Sorry. By mistake. Alan, when he picked up your glass by mistake, when did, did you I tell him? Mm -hmm. I d I'm sorry, I didn't notice, did he? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I wasn't aware of it. I, um, yeah. I drink scotch. And I was just, I mean, if that's, I don't know, I'm sorry. Well, what was your question, Paul? Um, Alan picked up her glass at the bar by yes. mistake. It, yes. And she didn't say anything, and I thought, I, you know, I wondered, like, if. Oh, I see, well, she, she wasn't noticed. aware of it. You were no, not aware of I it. was just drinking what I, you know, thought. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And I didn't really notice any. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Gordon. Uh, Charlie, when he said, when you said you were going to get even with Alan, did you mean that you were going to use physical violence on him? Oh, no, I don't think so, no. He's just a boozer, and uh, I never liked him. And, I'd just get the money. He'd, he'd, he'd be the sort of chap who'd uh, leave, leave, leave Alan me for months and months, and you'd have to take him to court. Right. And uh, one, for, one for Susie, actually, if I may. Yes, of course. Um, this question of drinking scotch all the time, but then Alan tries to refer to the fact that you used to drink beer. Did you? Well, on and off. I mean, I don't think it's very ladylike beer, and, uh, well, since I've been with Alan, uh, he's bought me scotch. Thank you. So I drink it. Uh, one's tastes develop, you know. <laughs> yes, the more successful one is. Quite right, too. The ready for the first replay, that is yours, Bill. Uh, you wanted to see the last moments of Alan McLean before he went to the big away game in the sky. Here it is. Now, uh, what should we drink to, eh? You know, I can remember when you drank beer. Mm. Oh, and just one cigar left. I thought I'd more. All right. Let's drink to the team of which I have the, the doubtful privilege to be. You don't look very happy about that. Aren't, aren't you pleased you asked for that? No, it suddenly looks like the dullest question I've ever <laughs> Well, it may be very pertinent. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you want to ask any questions appertaining to uh, that or not? No, not appertaining to that. No. no. Well, you, well actually, uh, I'd like to ask the detective, Di Roper. Evans, to give him his full title. Thank you. Um, Sergeant. Sergeant Di Roper Evans. Evans. Full title. You did comment on it, but you didn't seem very fretful that practically no clues or no possible pieces of evidence were around. The cigars, for instance, seemed to diminish gradually during the entire case. Uh, was that something you followed up at all? Oh, yes. There we made a, a considerable collection of rubbish uh, afterwards yes. from various places, but. Uh, uh, None seemed to have any bearing on any clue I was looking for. You didn't find a butt to the fifth cigar? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Mm, thank you. Yes, Paul. No? Uh, sorry, I thought you were signalling. Uh, Gordon, question? No, I was also mystified by the question of the cigars all the time, which kept disappearing. I think we, we lost count at one point, because there were... Last time we saw them, there were two, and then at the end, there were, there were none. I think I can actually help you on that. Go on. <laughs> Go on. Uh, in I fact, there were <laughs> three cigars were accounted for quite clearly. Alan had one himself, Dave had one, Fred had one, and yes. he then commented there's only one left. And it's this, which is obviously something we've got to go into a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. May I ask a question mm -hmm. to the policeman, please? Um, the police? The policeman, PC Good. Yes. Uh, can you tell me approximately how long cyanide takes to work? I'm afraid I don't know anything about cyanide. It's the, the sergeant who knows about cyanide. I see. He knows an awful lot about almonds, but he knows very little about cyanide. I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, could you perhaps tell me how long it takes to work? I don't know the exact quantity of hydrocyanic acid which is necessary to be administered, perhaps in a glass, for example, a glass of whiskey, but uh, unconsciousness can take place within seconds, mm -hmm. and death supervenes after w five minutes, unless amyl nitrite is given immediately. 
and there isn't a lot of that about these days. No. Not in a bar. <laughs> not, in a, not in your bar, of course. Yeah. There is the buzzer for the next replay. This is Paul's. Paul, you asked to see Sergeant Roper Evans questioning Fred the publican about what gossip he'd managed to overhear. Here it is. Watch carefully. Oh. What do you want to know? Standing behind the bar, did you by any chance hear any interesting conversations? In the course of duty? No, not really. Of course, I overheard what Mary and Charlie were saying because I was pulling a pint just next to them. You're right, Slope. If he's going to marry that girl, you might not get your alimony regular. So ask him, straight. Oh, you don't know Alan, Charlie. That was his brother-in-law for long enough. Yes, Paul. May I come to Fred, please? Yes, Fred? of course, Fred. Um, do you own the pub itself? Do I own it? Do you own it, yes. Yes. Uh-huh. And is I'm everybody in the scene of the crime, are they all regulars? The all pool? regulars, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Why is why is Fred then so accusing all the time? Don't ask me, sir. You must ask Fred. Fred. Yes. <laughs> Fred, uh, don't you like your clientele in a friendly publican manner? Uh, yes, I do, but... Um, I had a bit of difficulty over the match and a little financial moment. It made me slightly heated under the collar, as you might say. But um, not really, no, I'm, I'm rather like that, really. What, he's e eager to leap in and accuse people of all manner of misbehaviour? Why well, do you think I accused lots of people? Three, I think, yes. Did I? Good, yes. Oh, well, maybe yeah, I... Can that, of course, may... That, of course, may account for the fact that there were singularly few people in the pub. <laughs> may I ask Dave, uh, are you a heavy smoker? No, no. How often do you sort of, well, for instance, how, how many sort of cigars or cigarettes did you have in that particular evening? Well, if they're offered, I'll have one, you know, but um, I don't buy them myself. Mm, you don't? No. You don't remember how many you had that evening? No, not often, no. Could I ask David? Yeah, well, no, just one minute, please, Bill, because we're now ready for the next replay. <coughs> Gordon, this is yours. You wanted to see Charlie picking up Fred, uh, not literally, of course, uh, for leaving out a bit. And I mean, of course, a bit of the story, in case you're concerned. <laughs> Here it is. You swear that's the conversation. Hey, hang there. on there. You... Hang on there. Didn't you leave a bit out, Fred? What are you trying Let to... me tell you, Sergeant, what he said after Mary went over to join Alan. Having trouble with Alan, then, Charlie? Listening as usual, Fred. Not exactly. Only I've got a score to settle with him. Ah, uh, what's that? Does he owe you money? In a strange way, yes. Yeah. Yes, the wrong one, obviously. Um, <laughs> what, the wrong clue? The wrong, uh, the wrong section piece. I, I asked for, yes. I think one should have asked for, I should have asked for, or somebody should have asked, the section at the end when everybody is at the bar, because the cyanide working so quickly that it must have happened at that particular point. And there's so much going on at that point with these interchange of whiskey glasses that mm. is Susie and Alan uh, cross-changing. Yes. And the cigar. That's mm. the bit I asked for, the, the, the 20 seconds leading up to the cessation of the heart, which we, we didn't more. get, actually. No, we needed more. Uh, they stopped that. before he actually died. That's right. Yes, yes that we piece did. is missing. Mm, what a shame. Uh, could I <laughs> ask? <laughs> you <Yeah, laughs> yes, You'll have to work it out without yes, it. I'm sure. sure. Charlie, yes. um, I... I ha have you finished, though, Gordon? Oh. I mean, you were making a statement. Yes, not asking that was a total waste of time, that one, I'm afraid, yes. I yes, know. but you, would, uh, any questions you'd like to ask? Not, uh, not no, at the moment. No. William, it's all yours. This is a two-part question concerning, really, four people. Charlie, you have a very, uh, um, almost a very excitable relationship, a protective relationship for your sister. It seems to me that it must, there's a, another element over and above that. I'm not suggesting anything... Uh, I sincerely hope not. <laughs> psychologically, but in fact, are you married yourself? Oh, yes. But you seem to be almost, uh, your anger about anything that affects your sister seems to be slightly higher than one would expect it, perhaps in some... Oh, no, no, we're like that in Houghton. We're just a family, you know, a close family, and uh, we're just like that. I mean, uh, psychological, I don't understand that. It's just... Uh, but had she married anybody, might you have felt the same? It's that strong? I think so, yes. You keep Hello. an eye, you keep an eye on them. Yes, I do. They're a them. very close-knit family. Yes. yes. I want to ask Dave if I... Yeah, well, may I... Because Paul hasn't had much to say after now, and he's just about... I'd like to meet Charlie, if I may, please. Um, have you always been biased against Alan, in any way, for any, what, 11,000 a year as a football manager? No, it's his... Uh, it's his personality and his boozing. Yeah. And he's... Uh, I don't know, I just didn't like him very much. Did it, can I, yes, please. Did it ever annoy you over um, Charlie and Mary getting divorced? No. 
them getting divorced? Yeah, they did annoy you in any way. Well, it wasn't good for the family, but uh, on the other hand, it's, uh, in a way, she was uh, better off without him. Yeah, OK. Yeah, and ready for the next replay. This is yours, I think, Sandra. You were asked for the part where Alan McLean buys a round of drinks. No doubt as he's a Scot who simply didn't believe that he would. Here it is. Oh, Fred, uh, how about uh, a round for the others, eh? You know, uh, Charlie, Susie, Dave here. A vodka neat. And have one for yourself. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, and uh, have a cigar. Thank you, Alan. Now, where's my drink, eh? Hmm. 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 Yeah? Um, what, um, let me see, may I ask, uh, Fred, um, what did you do, uh, after, after being given the order of the drinks? I helped myself to one. You did that first? After I'd given the round of drinks. I see. Um, Dave, did you, uh, have another cigar any time then? When the drinks were being got, did you decide to have the cigar that you'd been given, or...? No, no, I th as I remember it, um, I lit the cigar up when I was being questioned by the detective sergeant here. I see. At the table. That was the one that, um, Susie brought over, like. I see. You waited until then, really. Yes, well, it. I think it was a, other things on my mind, like, you know. Yes. Mm. What sort of things? Well, I wanted to have it out with, um, uh, Alan about, uh, transfer, you know. Well, that was a bit late, wasn't it? What was? To have it out with him. Oh. No, I don't think it was. What are we talking about now? <laughs> well, uh, you said you, you wanted to have it out with Alan, but Alan, in fact, was no longer with you at that particular time. Oh, well, it was, I suppose, I don't know, it's, um, it's something to do, sitting there with him question, you know, under yes. pressure like, and yes. uh, just felt like having a fag on. I see. Fine. All right. Mm. Good. William, back to you. Bill, you had a question uh, you wanted yes. to ask before. Well, I'm going to ask, actually, uh, uh, ask uh, Susie, this is a very delicate question, because at the moment you're obviously emotionally very overwrought with the loss of Alan. I mean, that's very plain to see. Uh, <laughs> at any time in the past, would it be fair to say, that is the past as from this moment, have you ever had an affair with Dave? Well, um, I did actually meet Alan through Dave. Uh, I suppose you could say we were intimate. Did you live together? Oh, no, no, no. Just... But you were just intimate? Yes. Thank no. you. Right. Time's up, panel. I want you to finish filling in your football coupons or, and your whodunit cards if you've got the time. Right, for you at home only, nobody in the studio will see this, I'm going to show you one last clip of film which does have a clue in it. See if it helps. Now, uh, what should we drink to air? You know, I can remember when you drank beer. Mm. Oh, just one cigar left. I thought I'd more. All right. Of course, you could only have spotted the clue if you can remember what happened later on. Right, let's have your cards, please. Thank you, Gordon. Oh, Sandra. Thank you, Bill. Nobody can cheat. I've got the cards. So, this is the big moment. Bill... Who done it? And clues, please. Uh, Dave, very naive clues, it would appear. The dart, you said you practiced with these, and suddenly you brought a dart with you over to the bar. I didn't have a chance to find out how your Swahili was, but I assume that you tipped the dart with something, and uh, Alan leant on it and <gasps> jumped when he was pricked, and the rest is history. Thank you very much. Sandra, who done it? And a clue or two. Um, well, I don't... I think it was Dave. Um... But uh, not for that reason. Just before uh, Alan took his, his last drink um, and smoked his last cigar, he had put the packet of cigars down on the counter and went to talk to someone else. And when you, the, you came back to the cigars, they'd been moved, and one cigar was missing. And he took the last cigar, which this was lit by Dave, and I reckon that Dave did it. Very perspicacious. Yes. Perhaps. Maybe. Paul. Um, I'll go for Mary, I think she did it, carrying the cyanide up to the bar and um, swapping the drinks with Susie. That's all I've got. Right. See? And Gordon? I thought it had to be one of the women, either Mary or Susie, because it was poison and cyanide. 
I then thought it wasn't. I then thought it had to be obviously someone at the bar. The one who was most at the bar was Fred, who was aggressive. He also had a very good motive, the strongest motive, so it seemed, of all of them. And he has the largest lobes, which are the sure sign of a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got very good eyesight. Yes, right. Well, that's what they think. And let's see who's right. Will the real who done it stand up, please? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah. Well done. Yeah. Why? How? That's the point. Oh, congratulations. Well done, Bill. Well done, Sandra. In fact, Sandra pips you well and truly to the post because her clues were dead on, as you will now see. Now, the only other question is how many of you got the clues right? Now, just to clear out the details, you'll remember that I said that there were two main clues and two minor clues leading to the main ones. Now, the first main clue was the cigar packet. Alan started with a new packet of five. He smoked one himself. He sent one over to Dave via Susie and gave one to Fred. So if you counted, it should have left him with two. Yet just before he died, he announced that he'd only got one left. So one cigar left. I thought I'd more. All right. Therefore, somebody had switched the packet. The clue leading to Dave was that the only time the packet was not in Alan's pocket was when it was on the bar during the mats game. Only Dave had access to it, and the packet was on its side when Alan picked it up again. So you should have deduced that he must have swapped it. Now, the minor clues were that Susie took a drink from Alan's glass by mistake, so the poison could not have been in his drink. And secondly, the sergeant explained that cyanide is quick, which nullifies the possibility of earlier dart scratches or tablets. Well, that's the end of the present series. I was hoping to show you a clip of a film showing the city playing at this point, but if I did, you'd all want to kill the manager. <laughs> they are dreadful. In fact, they're so bad that every time they win the toss, uh, they go for a lap of honour. <laughs> See you soon, and good night. <laughs>